Pizza Flix presents Classic Movie Monday. For those who love classic espionage films and vintage cryptography, this one's for you. Starring Leon Ames as a cold cracking G-Man and Pizza Flix fave Joan Woodbury as the heart-stopping international spy. What do you want? We'd like to see Mr. Wormer, Mr. Robert Wormer. No one of that name lives here. You get out or I call the police. Don't bother. We'd have brought them with us if we needed them. Wormer's here. We want to see him. There is no Wormer here. I tell you that again. I don't know that name. Take a look around. Keep an eye on him. This is an outrage. Which one of you two is warmer? Oh, I don't know him. You know, you're only making it more difficult for yourself. Oh, you're only wasting your time. That's yeah, quite a haul. There's a laboratory inside and enough invisible ink to transcribe the congressional record. Besides these. Code books. These will come in handy. Yeah, have a look at our friend. Caslon. You know, these passport likenesses are pretty horrible. Here's another one. This time it's Felix. But the picture's just as bad. Here's a beauty. <laughs> Fancy, that one. <laughs> Van Gruen. You must have a hard time remembering just who you really are. Not any more difficult than it will be for you to find out. Oh, we could make it a little easier. You know, soften him down a bit. He'll have plenty of time to change his mind. About 30 years. Here's an interesting list of forwarding addresses. Canada, Mexico, Honduras, Guatemala. Panama. Where's that door? In Wagner's way. Is that upstairs? I'll get the other door. I'll see if I can get
Yes? Oh, it's you, Wama. You know you shouldn't call me up here. It was necessary. The government agents have been to the Elm Street house. They must have deciphered the radio message we are transmitting to Geneva. I managed to escape. Go to the station and remain there until you hear from me. And tell them to use the alternate code immediately. Oh, it's that fellow wearing again. We shall have to do something with him. We'll arrange it at the proper time. You'll hear from me tomorrow. Good night. Lane. Lane. Yes, sir. Did you telephone for Paul? Yes, he ought to be here any moment. This coffee's cold. Well, no wonder. Well, get some more. You've had enough now to float a battleship. I still want coffee. All right, drown yourself. Jimmy! Right? More coffee. Again? And make it stronger. If it's any stronger than last time, it'll walk in by itself. Then it ought to get here quicker than you'll bring it. Oh, wise guy, huh? What do you make out of it? Change code. Coming through in groups of eight letters. We have nothing on record like it. Got a complete copy? Yeah, I'm just rechecking. It's coming in regularly every hour. All right, let's see what we can do with it. Morning, Helen. Ship ahoy, how are you, Admiral? Philip didn't come home at all last night. What about you? I've been up to six bells in the dog watch. What a life. Uh, I can't understand why you stick around this office. Because your brother couldn't find a sane person to hold the job. I think you're right. And how are all your little battleships this morning? Yeah, now you're not fooling. I haven't seen a battleship since I left Annapolis. Think of all the seasickness you've missed. Four years of good hard work and study. To be an errand boy to an assistant secretary in the Navy Department. Don't be discouraged, Paul. Maybe your brother has something in mind. That's why he sent for you. Oh, well, I wish he'd do something. He promised he'd have me in the bureau with him and... There, Cutie, is that fast enough for you? Okay, Lightning. Oh, here he comes, now. See what you can do with those. Good morning, Philip. Good morning. Don't you ever come home? Oh, we had a little tough luck last night. That band of agents who gave us so much trouble about three years ago are back again. The ones who operate exclusively with cipher codes. We decoded one of their messages and picked up an address, but they outwitted us and got away. That's what I want to see you about. I do everything for him except comb his hair. Hmm. Some discipline. <laughs> Our job right now is to find that secret broadcasting station or we'll be decoding ciphers from now on. Do you know how to operate a goniometer? Sure, of course. I've been experimenting with the one that Chalmers just invented. Been locating airplanes for the angle of their radio beams. That's why I sent for you. But I wouldn't talk too much about that Chalmers instrument. Lane, call the Bureau of Navigation. I want to speak to Commander Nash. Bureau of Navigation, Commander Nash. <clears throat> I'm going to send you to the Brooklyn Navy Yard to take directional readings on the cipher broadcast that's being transmitted. We may be able to locate the station that way. Any idea what they're after? We never know that we catch them. They've made elaborate preparations. It's something that may mean hundreds of thousands of American lives. The whole world sitting on a powder keg, no knowing when some fool may throw a spark into it. Just a moment, please. Commander Nash on your line. Hello, Commander. This is Waring. Fine, thank you. And you? Splendid. Commander, I'd like to use Lieutenant Waring for a couple of days. Special assignment. Well, yes, of course, Major. A little excitement for the lad? <laughs> well, whatever it is, you go right ahead. Thanks very much. I'll send a memorandum. Sure, I'll drop by the first chance I get. Goodbye. Lane, send a memo to the Bureau of Navigation today. You report to Stevens next door. He'll furnish you with a Chalmers goniometer. Now, I want you to record the exact angle at which that high-frequency broadcast comes into the Brooklyn Yard. Clark will do the same at Norfolk. And where those two lines cross will be the spot for us to go to work. Can I be in on that, too? 
You've got one job to do. Thanks, Philip. Good luck. Get Clark here right away. I'm sending him to Norfolk. Proceed immediately to Charleston. Await instructions there. That is all. Welcome. Proceeding Charleston. Flying at 5,000. On beam. Signing off. Paul Waring! I thought you'd be in China or somewhere. Imagine running into you. How are you, old Sea Walrus? Oh, never better. But tell me, what's happened to you? Uh, this is the first time I've been outside of Washington. Are you assigned to the show? No, no, only for the day. Checking out a special high frequency broadcast out of Washington. Well, anything I can do to help? No, I've only got to set up and take a reading. Operator! Can you pull in anything above 2,500 kilocycles? I think I can bring it in, sir. That's it. soon. Thank you. I suppose that's where you get off.
No, no, darling. I will show you. Good morning, Theresa. Good morning, Maestro. Now, watch me. Teresa, what success? I bring news of victory. How could he help but being impressed by your charm and your beauty? He was young enough to be impressionable. And besides, he had the advantage of the moonlight on the observation platform until two. <laughs> and I must get some sleep. You will report my success. Of course. You are to see him again, eh? Oh, well, of course. There'll be a call today. Hi, Alan. Hello. Hello, Paul. Stick around. We're about to intersect your reading with Clark's. Oh, thanks. I'd like to know the result. Angle from Brooklyn Navy Yard. 22 degrees, 17 minutes and 26 seconds. Off due south. From Norfolk, 38... 7, 58, off due north. Say, look at that. Well, that's impossible. Well, that's ridiculous. That place is the sending station in the Capitol building. Paul, are you sure about your goniometer reading? I checked a half a dozen times. The angle never varied. How about you, Clark? I had the same results, no variations. Uh-huh. They probably figured we'd check and arrange so we'd find this. All right. We'll use the three points. Brooklyn, Norfolk, and Washington. Draw the arc of a circle through them and let me know what's on that arc. Yes, sir. Lane, let me see the cipher they're broadcasting. <clears throat> Philip, can I stick with you on this? Sorry, Paul. Report back to Commander Nash. Oh, uh, Lane, send a memo of thanks to Commander Nash. Tell him Lieutenant Waring did a nice job for us. I'll see you at home tonight. Okay, Philip. Tight all. Chart the relative positions of all the T's and the H's. If it decodes in English, it might give us a start. Right. What'd you find out? There's three possible towns show up on that arc. Walden, New Jersey, Endicott, Tennessee, and Portsmouth, Virginia. Uh-huh. Lane, get Wyckoff and Peters. They're going to Walden, New Jersey, and instruct Allen and Harmon to proceed to Portsmouth, Virginia. Give them all the necessary data. We've got to find that broadcasting station. Tight all. Get an order this map of Tennessee. We're going there. That place is worth investigating. Clark, you take care of him. I don't know, I'll try a window. Have 
Have you finished your message, Franz? Franz! Franz! Don't make a sound. I thought we'd meet again. And so did I. You might drop that pistol, Mr. Warren. And you too, Mr. Tidal. Castle is waiting for you on the phone. Go and tell him what takes place. That Mr. Waring annoys us no longer. Of course, this means that we have to move. But you, naturally, never know it. Oh! Gone. I'll see if I can get him. You fellas left the place over. We have plenty of evidence to convict those we picked up yesterday, but they're only small fry. We've got to catch the one who's directing all this work. Oh, we can put a little pressure on those we've got. They never talk. Why should they? They've nothing to lose by keeping their mouths shut. We can't offer them immunity. But what if they sweat? Those who work in espionage are selected because of their ability to take whatever comes. Now, nope, we've got to figure it out ourselves. You're not going to write these things all over again, are you? No, I'm going to make a list of the frequencies. How many times each letter appears. It may give us a clue. See, Jimmy? No, I... Say, maybe I could learn something about them. Why not? You check these letters while I call them off from the breakdown board. All right. C. R. N. A. I. Well, what are we going to do? Yeah. Our first job is to stick to this eight-letter cipher until we've broken it down. Good morning. Hello, Paul. Hi, Paul. Uh, yeah. Even Sunday isn't sacred. E. You too, Helen? N. Don't you ever get tired? Yes. V. We can't. We're in the Army now. <laughs> U. What are you doing here? I've got to spend the day at Annapolis. I thought N. maybe I could drag you along. That's why I dropped by. L. Taking her to the scenes of your boyhood. That's serious, w. huh? She's very lovely, Phil. M. You wait until you see her. Judging M. from the effect the young lady's had on M. you, I can hardly wait. Well, can't you join us M. later? Tonight. Gee. No, oh, I'm sorry, Paul, I can't. R. This is too important. G. Any success? A little, but not enough. E. But don't you worry about it. Go on out and enjoy yourself. M. Besides, if I went along, she might fall for me. Uh, well, maybe you're right. I better make sure of her myself before I let you meet her at all. G. Go on, get out of here, and good luck to you. <laughs> good luck to both M. of us. G. A. O. O. S I F E R T E E E A T R R. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Not so fast. What do you think I am? An adding machine? You'd be surprised what I think. T R R. T R R. R A T A. Oh, R, that's all. That's enough. The frequencies point to the English language A, E, N, O, T, fairly consistent with the established frequencies. All right, we'll see what we can do with it. We'll start with a T and the H's. You have an H in the first row and a T almost directly under the second. Move the second row to the right one space. The lines may be inverted. That might happen in a double transposition cipher. What about the other combinations of T and H? They occur in 17 and 19, in 22 and 20. Inverted again. In 18 and 16, and in 6 and 4, twice. We have the combination five times, always with a factor of two, two lines apart. Lane, take out the even numbered lines.
Now I'll move up the ones left on the board. Now, uh, invert the order of the even-numbered lines and put them back. I think we can read it now. Peter, Jackal, Oslo... Lane, type this. All right, go ahead. Peter, Jackal, Oslo. The plans are ready for transfer from the Navy office here to the, to the and a naval base, we will arrange to be or to borrow them along this path and recommend you immediately confer confirm instructions for delivery. THR through, through our Decker Royal Gardens. Did you get it? Yes, sir. Now check on Royal Gardens. Jimmy. That's me. Get me a telephone directory. Come on. You know it's true. The new naval plans under the current congressional appropriation have just recently been approved by the Navy Department. I wonder what they're after, particularly. In a general way, the plans have been discussed in all the newspapers. The secret details, of course, are never divulged. The entire naval program is one of defense. If a potential enemy anticipated every defense move, the results would be disastrous. Definitely, they're after our defense secrets. And particularly, I should say, the details of the long-range gun just perfected. An improved modern version of the famous French 75, which every nation has been experimenting with since the World War. But we're in time to warn the department. Of course. There may be even a better plan. Lane, what'd you find? There's a Royal Gardens listed here on Covington Drive. You boys check with me later. Then we'll figure on a visit to Royal Gardens this evening? We might create suspicion. I'll let you know when you call me. Can I go home now? No. You and I are going on a little picnic. A picnic? You mean sandwiches, stale coffee, and ants? Oh, be yourself. Well, you said a picnic. <laughs> go on home and change your clothes. I'll pick you up. We're going to dinner at the Royal Gardens tonight. You mean you're really going to take me out? On official business. Well, official business is better than no business at all. <laughs> you've been hiding something. What? You should take me out oftener. You do it charmingly. You think so? Mm -hmm. Make a memo of that. Okay, Chief. I'm trying to spot that big fellow who's been walking around the place. It's probably Decker. I think I'll try and locate his office. You shouldn't take any chances alone. If I'm gone more than half an hour, call out the Army and Navy. Philip! Oh, Philip! It's my brother. Philip, I want you to meet Therese. I'm delighted. He's the one I've been telling you about. You know, she said she was almost afraid to meet you. <laughs> really? <laughs> Paul hasn't been quite honest with me. I don't understand. He's only told me half-truths about your charm. And then you think perhaps you may like me? How could he help it? Sit down, Philip.
what's the matter? Therese was doing well with that young officer. Until just now. His brother arrived. Made him here? Perhaps they made the appointment. No. It was by accident. Even the young man was surprised. It isn't possible that he just picked this place. Not wearing. Ah, well, don't worry. Therese will handle him. What in the world brought you here? I kept Lane working all day, so I promised to take her to dinner. I can only stay a minute. She's waiting for me. You're over. I can't. We still have a little work to do. Mm -hmm. If it should all be spoiled now. Perhaps we can make sure that it isn't spoiled. Well, I guess I'll leave you two alone. Why can't you stay? You remain with us for a little while, won't you? Sorry, but I'd better get back to Miss Lane. I hope we'll be seeing a lot of each other. Excuse me. Come on, we're leaving. Thank you. There's no question but that Lieutenant Waring was drawn into this situation for a purpose. That seems evident. All right, we'll play it their way. The naval plans are to be delivered shortly? Yes, during the coming week. Would it be possible to have Lieutenant Waring deliver them? But that seems like taking unnecessary chances. Well, he'll carry false plans. The real plans will reach the proper destination. You want your brother to be the cat's paw? In this matter, he's simply Lieutenant Waring. Well, I feel that we can carry out your plan, Major. Lieutenant Tydall can carry the real plans. That'll be quite satisfactory. I'll confer with the secretary in the morning. Thanks very much for coming in, Commander. Good night. Good night, Major. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll drop you off, Lane. Good night, Philip. Good night. Good night, Lane. Good night. Don't you realize what you're doing to Paul? Of course I do. And you're willing to let him take a chance on his career, even his life? In this work, we have to take chances. But to let him go into a thing like this blindly? It will defeat our whole purpose otherwise. Besides, Paul can take care of himself. You hope. What's one career? One life, for that matter, staked against possibly the safety of millions. Paul, oh, we'll sit right here. A martini, please. Yes, sir. Martini. Isn't the Havre de Grace track right over there? Well, yes, I think it is. It doesn't seem to be lighted. I thought they were holding a fair at the track. That isn't until the end of this month. Well, I suppose I was wrong. Hello, Commander. Oh, come in, Major. Pull up a chair. I have some news for you, and it isn't especially good news. From New York? Yes. Lieutenant Waring was taken from the train at New York, intoxicated. Intoxicated? That's impossible. No, there's no question about it. Here's the report of the police doctor. And the plans? They were gone. What about the two men who were put on the train to watch him? They were found unconscious in their compartment, apparently beaten with the butt of a gun. Lieutenant Waring is being brought back here under arrest. He'll have to stand court-martial, of course, and most likely you will be called as a witness. Yes, yes, of course. <clears throat> May I see that report? Do you swear the evidence you are about to give at these proceedings is the truth? I do. Sit down. You are Officer James McDermott, a member of the New York Police Force. I am. In the course of your duties, 
Did you ever come in contact with any person in this room? I did. That young man there. Explain to the court the circumstances of your meeting. I was on duty at the Pennsylvania station. Last Tuesday night, about 11 o'clock, I was called to the platform of the train coming from Washington. In one of the cars, I found this young man. It looked like he was intoxicated. So I took charge of him. Where did you take him? To the 34th Street station, where Dr. Mayat examined him. Thank you. That is all. Counsel for defense may question the witness. No questions. You are dismissed. I offer a copy of Dr. Mayat's official report to the New York Police Department. It states that upon medical examination, Lieutenant Waring's condition was found to be due to liquor intoxication. Call Major Philip Waring. Major Philip Waring. You swear the evidence you are about to give at these proceedings is the truth? I do. Sit down, please. You are Major Philip Waring? I am. You're on duty with the Cypher Bureau. In charge of counter-espionage? Yes, sir. Major Waring, to your knowledge, has Lieutenant Waring ever been associated with alien spies? No, sir. To your knowledge, has he at any time been indirectly associated with such persons? Yes, sir. Can you explain the nature of this contact? No, sir, I can't. Isn't that an unusual reply, Major Waring? I can't answer directly without divulging information which must be kept absolutely secret at this time. Question waived. But you are certain that the defendant did come in contact, even though indirectly, with alien agents? Yes, sir. That'll be all, Major Waring. Lieutenant Waring's counsel. No questions. Witness is dismissed. The court is closed. We must consider this case purely from the actual evidence submitted. It was straightforward and convincing, with the possible exception of Major Waring's evidence. Yet from the circumstances, our decision might be greatly guided by it. This court finds you guilty of conduct unbecoming an officer, of being intoxicated while in pursuance of your duty, of willfully permitting valuable papers to fall into alien hands, and recommends that you be dishonorably discharged as an officer in the United States Navy. Court is adjourned with the call of the president. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. Lieutenant, this way. Paul. Did Paul phone? Hasn't he been home? No, not yet. I want to see Tidal. We're going to make a call. When you get him, I'll be in Colonel Graham's office. Brahms, please. Yes, of course.
Whom should I see? Just say Philip. She'll understand. Maestro, shall we go into your room? As you say. We can do without the concert. Yeah, I used to be pretty good there. I'll bet. Major, where are you? Where is Paul? I don't know. I haven't seen him since the day of the court martial. I thought he might come to you. He doesn't want to face us. He's so ashamed of his disgrace. And it was all so needless. The papers they took from him were of no importance. You mean it wasn't what the newspaper said? No, not the important documents which were reported. The ones they took from him were of no value at all. <laughs> I'm so glad. Does he know this? No, that's why I wanted to find him, tell him that perhaps before long he would be vindicated. Oh, he'll come to me. I know he will. Let me tell you. Well, I'd rather tell him if you don't mind. Of course. Then when he comes, I send him to you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, why'd you tell her they didn't get the right plans? It's playing right into their hands. Well, that's what I meant to do. If the information gets back to them, we'll know how it got there. Well, do you still think she's in it? No question about it. Take him to my office. Get rid of him tonight. For good. Come in here, Paul. You shouldn't have come here, Paul. Why not? Oh, I suppose you haven't any use for me now. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Oh, darling. You know I'm innocent. Of course, Paul, I believe you. Well, if you do, I, I can start all over again. I can make something of myself. You will. I'm sure you will. Well, then you'll, you'll marry me? I wanted to ask you before all this happened, Therese. Honestly, I did. Has it, has it made any difference to you? I'm sorry, Paul. I can't. Is it because I've been thrown out of the service? No. No, it's because we could never be happy. Never. Thanks. You're up to something. Groot warned me. You sent for that young man and his brother. I had nothing to do with it. 
You know what my orders are. To put you out like this. If you make one false move. I'm going out of here. You will have no chance to betray us. See that she doesn't leave. I get wearing in here. After that, you'll see that he doesn't leave. Coming? Hello, Therese. You sent for me? Yes, I did. Very good. Hello, Caslon. Or is it Felix or Van Gruen this time? Before. First, we must find out how much he knows. It may be important to us. Ah. You're coming to your senses. Ah, it was you who acted a little foolish, Decker. You will know how to make him talk, no? You'd be wasting your time, Decker. I agree with the Major. We must find out how much they've discovered. It may mean our safety. Why is he here alone tonight, for instance? Yes. Why did you come here alone? <laughs> is there any law against a man dropping into a cafe for a bite to eat alone? What's the real reason? Apparently, you don't understand English very well. Therese, you better leave. Goodbye. You better drop those guns. Lieutenant, I'm glad to see you. What brought you here? Some woman telephoned headquarters. Oh, take these two men in charge. Yes, sir. And what about the woman? No, she had nothing to do with it. All right, come on. Why didn't you include me when you arrested them? Why did you phone headquarters? Because I love Paul. You wouldn't believe me, I know that, unless I gave you some proof. Well, I would like to know just which side you're on. You brought me in the room, you know. No. No, they did that. More than ever, then, I had to make you believe in me, because I want to help you. If I hadn't become traitor to them, I never would have been worthy of Paul's love. You know that. I know it. Even if he doesn't. He was there tonight. He asked me to marry him. I refused. I had to, until I'd made myself worthy. You could ask me questions, but you don't. You couldn't answer them. <laughs> You're right. There's little I can tell you. Many things I don't know. In this work, each does some little part. Only one man can put all the pieces together. Even I'm not sure who he may be. But perhaps, Major, that's what I can find out for you. Well, if you can do that, you're OK with me.
decipher, they will never be able to decode. It will be broadcast under their very nose. The music will enthrall them. They will never guess that they are listening to our message. That man Ellsworth, are you positive we can depend upon him? When I can no longer depend upon them, they are no more. Then be assured we have the plans. Tomorrow night, the photographs of the gun shall be safely in my possession. Depend upon that. Good evening, my dear. Did you enjoy yourself? Yes, it was lovely. And weary? What are you talking about? You know what we are talking about, don't you, dear? And you are too dear to me, lovely Teresa, for us ever to lose you. You mean you are going away? Yes. And I'm going with you. Exactly. Aren't you delighted? And to be sure, we shall not be deprived of your delightful presence. You'd better not, shall we say, leave this house again. May I, may I tell Paul? No, 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 you shouldn't see him again. May I just write to him to say goodbye? What do you say, Harry? Well, if it'll make her happy. But do not have any false hopes. We shall see exactly what you write. Much Gustav. Love sharpens the wits of women as surely as it dulls the wisdom of men. Beware. What do you make of it, cipher expert? Oh, uh, says uh, Focus Stanislaw, for what do you hear from Bush and his phone for two for a half or radio in less than 20 minutes? What kind of talk is that? Like you write. We ought to get together sometime. Yes, but uh, who would understand each other? Scram. Scram, she says. <coughs> Pardon me. Paul. Hello, Helen. He's been waiting to hear from you. Come along with me. Philip. Huh? Paul. Why haven't you been home? Well, I have my own reasons for that. Something happened, something queer. That, that's why I've come. No matter why you came, I have a lot of things to tell you. Well, wait until I show you this. Therese. When I got the letter, I went to her home. It was vacant. You see anything odd in it? Yes. Yes, I do. No one would write a letter like this and mean it. Let me read it again. I had hopefully held back until tonight, but our plans, dear Paul, are not now to ever, ever be realized. I've taken this cowardly way to tell you. Always I'll watch and pray over you. The air I breathe tonight warms with memories of every hour we've loved. But dear Paul, Philip would never forgive you or me, never, if he learned of our secret love. 
Darling, as I say goodbye, I cherish three unforgettable days at Annapolis. Forgive me, but darling, do not forget me, Therese. She said our secret love. It wasn't secret, Philip. Yeah, I know. She told me last night she loved you. She told you that, did she, Philip? Never mind that now. There's something here she wants to tell us. Secret love. Secret. Well, it's in here for us to find. Well, one other thing about the letter. We only went to Annapolis once. Why does she say three times? Because only you and she knew that. Three. There's a clue for us. Three. Lane, give me that pencil. The secret she wants us to know involves three. Three. Every third word. Clever girl. Here's her message. I tell tonight, plans are to be taken. Way, you watch over air tonight. Memories hour. That's clear enough. Get Norfolk on the phone. Norfolk, Naval Base. Have you got it today's paper? Yes. See if memories hour is listed in the radio section. Here it is, 8 o'clock tonight over WAWC, Memories Hour with Simon Herrick, soloist. Simon Herrick? Well, he's that pianist at Goode's Conservatory. Norfolk, just a moment, please. I have your call for you. Hello, this is Major Waring, Cypher Bureau, Washington. The naval plans recently delivered may have been photographed. Please check at once. I'll hold on. I have the plans in the office. I'll check. Attack holes in all the corners. No, we've had no occasion to do that. Now check on the man in charge of the files. I'll hold on. Clark. Yes? Check with the radio station and see if there's a shortwave relay of that broadcast. All right, go ahead. There's a Charles Ellsworth who handles all blueprints. Our records show that he didn't report for work either yesterday or today. Thanks, that's all for the present. I'll make a report to the commander at once. Goodbye. I haven't time to explain now. All I can say is you were allowed to be the GOAT. What? Right. No time for questions. At 8 o'clock tonight, you'll be at radio station WAWC. And when Simon Herrick leaves, don't let him out of your sight. When he reaches the destination, phone me immediately. I'll be here. Now, how are you fixed for money? Well, I haven't got very much. Make out a requisition to the paymaster. Good luck. We'll need it. Did you get that information? Yes, sir. There's a shortwave rebroadcast on that 8 o'clock show. I thought so. Get tied all and stand by. Yes. Lane. Lane. You ought to be very happy. Well, I am, but I haven't got time to enjoy it right now. Don't make any dates for tonight. I never do. Call Foster, Radio Engineering Division. Tell him I want a transcription of that 8 o'clock show and a machine to run it on. Right. Get me the best musical technician you can find and a typewriter for transcriptions. Captain will help you. Have him here at 8 o'clock sharp. Right. Anything else? Isn't that enough? And now the guest for this evening's symphony concert, that eminent pianist, Simon Harry, who will play for us collection of his own composition, The Unfinished Wall. This is probably it.
ladies and gentlemen. I want every note listed. Each one may represent a letter, a word, or a phrase. Lane, get your notebook. I want to make some notes. Can you play it back, please? Here it is, Major Waring. Mm -hmm. Now will you transcribe the selection into letters representing each note? Of course, Major. Hello. Oh, it's you, Paul. Here, I'll take it. Hello, Paul. Hello, Philip. I trailed them to... Operator. Operator, we've been disconnected. You can't check the number? No, I don't know it. All right. Something's happened. We've got to work fast. With shops and flats, we can make 21 notes. Perhaps 21 letters of the alphabet if we can find a starting place. But there are only 12 different tones. C sharp and D flat are the same tone. E sharp is really F. You're right, but we'll use the 21 symbols as they're written here with C representing A and so on down through the alphabet and recoding an alphabetical progression till we find the right key. Well, let's try the fourth key. F sharp equals H. D equals A. E sharp equals E. G sharp equals L. D flat equals C. There's no J in the key. H equals J. It's Jackal. We've got it. Can't we do something about sailing? That's right. Go and see the captain. Ask him if there's any need for delay. If necessary, we'll pay him a bonus in order to get underway at once. A equals N. E equals D. That's it. Jackal, Copenhagen. Plans in our possession. Meet Sophie Grant with we'll seaplane at Canary. Cash is necessary as agreed. 200,000. Check shipping list up down the coast for the Sophie Grant. Call Norfolk Base, have a plane standing by in case of emergency. Is there a car available? Yes. Go down and wait for us. Well? The captain said he must wait for the clearance papers. We'll sail about one. All right, so that's the best we can do. Where are we? They brought us on board a ship. Hey? 
you're positive the plane will meet us at the Canaries. Yes, don't fear. Jekyll was prepared for the short labor lay of my broadcast. What, what are you doing here? Easy, Paul. They're in the next cabin. What are you going to do with uh, Lieutenant Waring? When we are clear of the headlands, you'll take care of our young friend. We gotta do something. We just can't sit here. Don't be a fool, Paul. They'll kill you. And I've got to get to Philip. And when we have cleared, you come right back here. It shouldn't be long. You forget, Eric. Waring must have discovered something. Or oh, why was his brother at the broadcasting station? Even so, they will never break that cipher. I'm afraid you underestimate Waring's ability. But you stand by here while I see the captain. Come on, Tidal. Why don't we get on the way? Go and see the captain. have come on board. Waring. Waring? On board? Yes, what do we do? We must get off. You guard that door. You wait here. We have other plans for you. I'll take care of that briefcase. Thanks, Paul. Now, what we principally want are some photographs. You will find them. They are there. Thanks. You liked it. My composition, I mean. You heard it, of course. Unfinished waltz. Unfinished work. Well, Herrick, that's the way it goes. All right, Tidal, I'll take him away. Well, that's insubordination. Now you listen to me. Take two hours off and comb your hair, and then get down to the license bureau, see that I go along. Arrange for tickets to Niagara Falls. Two tickets. Is that all? Isn't that enough? All right. What are we waiting for? Oh, Philip! You better make that four. We'll make a memo of that. <laughs> 